Welcome to the Online Hustle Podcast. In this episode, we have the privilege of speaking with Tom Mahoney, who has been instrumental in the growth of Serious Paul over the last 10 years. From small independent retailer, Serious Paul has diversified not only in sports, but also in their streams of revenue. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Online Hustle Podcast. We're joined today by Tom Mahoney from Serious Paul. Tom, how are you? I'm very good, Pierre. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you for asking. And as always, we can record on straight away. And the first question I ask my guests is, Tom, if you were to kind of meet someone and describe yourself and what you do, how do you go about yourself? Yeah, great question. Um, so I, I work in, in marketing. So I, I head up the marketing at, um, at Serious Sport. Um, I, I sort of came into marketing, uh, not, not sort of, I went to university, uh, went to Loughborough and studied sports science. And I always wanted to be a PE teacher. That was always my, my goal. I, I always had a passion coming through sport. I, I, you know, I've got to be a PE teacher and went to uni, did sports science, which was quite a broad degree, knowing that if I didn't then decide to be a PE teacher, I could go into other avenues. And I then um, came out of uni and I was sort of just fed up of study, 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 and, and almost took a took a year out to just sort of see what my options were I could always then go back and do a PGCE um, for a year and then go into teaching but I ended up stumbling into a, a role at, um, at Sirius where I'd actually worked part-time whilst I was at university and at university we did a little bit of sort of marketing um, in some of the degree and I ended up then saying okay I actually quite like this and I could see that Sirius didn't really have a, a marketing department and thought actually there's a good opportunity here for me maybe to to grow with the company which was you know 10 years ago this was now it's sort of um, on the upward trajectory so um, so yeah I sort of ended up almost stumbling into marketing and then from there I've done various sort of diplomas in marketing and sort of just grown with the business there um, so yeah I sort of stumbled into marketing but um, but yeah it's, it's been it's been a good journey. Yeah, safe to say it's worked, Tom, right? Well, yeah, and uh, well, that's nice of you to say. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to go straight into, into Sirius. Yeah. And the thing is, I'm a customer, right? I've experienced what you mm -hmm. guys do. And the the whole episode is kind of wrapping around the fact that you've been able to diversify revenue streams and kind of you know, not just, just stick to one way. Mm -hmm. However, I think it's really important to kind of set a journey, and I normally set this journey for our guests. So why don't we start with how Serious Paul really started, and what was the first revenue stream, and then we'll we draw that journey, journey to all the way now. Yeah, so it, it's a bit of a quirky journey, to be honest, and it's, it's quite a nice one to talk about. So um, Serious Sport, um, as a company, just to sort of let the listeners know, you know, we, we're a sports um, kit supplier, so... We predominantly now specialize in, in sort of bespoke design kits. Um, but as part of the Serious Sport group as such, there is Serious Cricket as a brand. And actually, Serious Cricket is where the company started. Um, and it was founded back in 2005 by the MD and his, and his brother. Um, and it, it started life as a, an independent cricket retailer selling, you know, bats, pads and gloves out of a small shop in, in Berkshire, uh, which actually ironically is. Um, the hometown that I grew up in. So there was always that that nice tie in. And um, it's always quite funny. Uh, the MD always shows me this picture, but the day they launched the shop, I was the first person in the queue. So he's got that. Oh, no way. He's got, he's got that picture that he always shows me just to remind me uh, where we've come, which is quite nice. But but yeah, it literally, it literally started as a, a small independent, as a cricket retailer. Um, and then we moved the operations to um, the Dummer Cricket Centre, which is where I am. And, and today and um, that was sort of the first move to sort of diversify the range a little bit um, because um, obviously operating in the, in the cricket shop in, in Fatsham you know um, you're you're really sort of busy for three four months of the year um, cricket is a very seasonal sport you, you'll obviously know um, so we needed to find a way to diversify the offering because it's very difficult to survive on just three to four months of, of trading really you know um and so when we moved across to the Dummer Cricket Centre, um, we then obviously bolted on um, like a first class cricket facility. So we have free net lanes and an arena here. So all of a sudden you, you're bolting on the ability for customers to come and train outside of the cricket season. So the centre's open um, pretty much seven days a week. Um, and, you know, we also run things like an indoor 
indoor cricket league as well, which we then have a bar on site so people can then come into the bar after their game and it just sort of spiraled from there and, and we brought the shop over as well. So actually what we turned this cricket centre into was a bit of a, a hub for cricketers where uh, if you want to come and buy a bat, you can buy a bat. But if you want to then go and have a net lane, you can go have a net lane. Or we actually then also brought in in-house our own coaching uh, program. So we have a, a full-time coach that works works here and he offers one-to-one coaching. But also throughout the year, he offers lots of sort of coaching programs. Um, so the sort of move over to the Dummer Cricket Centre offered those different sort of revenue streams um, outside of just pure uh, retail. And then... And then we moved into um, then we moved into uh, personalised teamwear. So um, so all of a sudden you've gone from just a retailer to then doing the coaching facility hire personalised teamwear. And I talk a lot about it at the start in cricket because that's how we started. But um, and then from there on in, um, and we'll probably talk about it more as, as we get through this. But personalised teamwear side of things because we do it ourselves, we could then diversify further and go into new sport markets. So we now do football, hockey, rugby, netball, schools, colleges, universities. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a quirky journey. Um, but yeah, that, that's sort of where we're at at the moment. Yeah. It's an amazing journey. And I really love from the start to end. And now you kind of set yourself up in, in an amazing way. And as I said, I've been to Dama Dama multiple times and it really has lots to do and it's almost like a it's almost like a leisure center for cricketers really because like <laughs> you do fun. you have your cricket lane you have your arena you have your bar you have your shop you know um i know chase cricket are next door as well which is an amazing yeah. cricket mm-hmm. brand as well so in terms of the whole position i think is really really good and uh, in terms of geographical position as well i think mm-hmm. you're so close to so many of those southern you know uk cricket playing com- counties as well it's it's really helped uh, as a as a geographical position as well. Yeah, I mean the location is a bonus because you know we're we're literally just off Junction Seven on the M3, so it's easy yeah. for people to just whip off and and come and come and come and see us. So um, obviously you do then have you know being obviously in one location does have its drawbacks, but actually um, you're right. There's so much cricket in and around the area uh, in the Hampshire area, Berkshire. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a it's a great hub for cricket as you, as you sort of said. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how you, speaking about the diversification of of the revenue streams, it kind of just happened, happened almost just kind of it was like the obvious next step to take, especially talking about grassroots sports in the UK. Mm. And I think this translates to other countries as well, where like there is a need for amateur sports at all times because it is entertainment, these people's hobbies. And I think you play a fantastic part in it because. The personalization side of things that we're going to touch up in a second is very, very unique. And I think it's incredibly important because it gives you, uh, someone like myself that plays in a, in a cricket club and plays multiple sports as well. It gives this sort of uniqueness and sort of, you know, unique and family feeling to our club mm-hmm. thanks to the products that you can provide us. Yeah, that's exactly it. I think, um, you know, the... the that's one thing that we we do bang on about quite a lot is that actually the, the kit that you're wearing it, it it's the identity of the club it is it, you said it perfectly you know and it's not just it's not just talking about people that are wearing it on the field it's actually the people off the field as well you know yeah. grassroots clubs is a prime example there's so many great volunteers behind the scenes whether it's somebody running the bar or somebody coaching the you know the junior section you know we want to be able to provide them with kit as well because actually you want to be proud wearing your kit. You want to you want to represent your team, um, and it doesn't have to always be on the field. It can also be off the field. You know, talking about cricket, but it does translate into all sports. To be honest, um, you know, I've, I've played cricket for many years, and you know, you come off the field and you see everybody in the bar wearing their polo shirts, or you know, it is a real community feel, and that and that's sort of what kit brings out. I think. Yeah, and um, it kind of works wonders for your brand awareness as well, right? Because you have your own unique logo, Serious Paul logo, and you recognize them. Like you recognize yeah. people wearing that that brand, and you know that club is, yeah. you know, are using you guys to to yeah. sort that kit. And yeah, there is like a, it, it's all very automated in terms of the way you the personalization has really worked. Can we go through the success stories behind it as well? Because I know that Serious Paul is really involved now, and and I've seen it not just on. Uh, um, not just on, on in person, but actually on TV as well. Yeah, so I think 
touching on something you, you mentioned earlier, um, obviously we're Hampshire based. So um, local to us is the, the Aegeus Bowl. Um, and it, it's amazing whenever we go and watch some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the internationals or any go and watch Hampshire down there. Um, it's amazing how much serious kit you see in the crowd. Um, and it's it's so great to see. It's, it's a bit of a strange one because cricket seems to be a sport whereby um, I don't know why, but when you go and watch a game of cricket, rather than actually wearing the, the top of the team that you're supporting, you would actually wear your club club kit. So yeah, I've um, done it. I've done it plenty of times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you wouldn't do it like as I say. I'm a Spurs fan, and I wouldn't I wouldn't go to Spurs wearing my local football shirt. But for some reason, in cricket, they do it, and it's amazing. You, you go to a game at the Aegeus, and you see our Serious S everywhere, and it, it, it's so good um, to see that. But but sort of taking that a step further, we um, in back in 2016 we. Uh, were approached to um, do the kit for the Southern Vipers. Um, and this was around, launch, they, uh, the ECB launched a new competition, uh, which is the Women's Super League. And um, they wanted to move it all to coloured kit. Um, and they approached us and said, would we like to do the kit for them? Because we already sort of had ties with Hampshire at the time. And um, we created a sort of unique bespoke design for them that actually had snake skin, like a snake skin pattern all over the kit. And um, it was it was quite unique at the time, and certainly none of the other teams were wearing anything quite like that. And it was very striking. Um, and that competition was then shown on Sky. And obviously, any time you see your kits on, that was the first time since I've been here that our kits have been on on, on television. So you sort of see that, and you think that that is just amazing. And it was so well received. You know, the commentators were commenting on it because it was so different. And um, yeah, that was just amazing on the cricket side to, to have the kit on the telly. And then on the sort of serious sports side, and a bit more recent, um, we partnered with Ascot United Football Club um, and they got into the FA Vars um, final um, this year. Um, and we, we obviously were doing the kit for them and the final was at Wembley. So it's National Stadium. It's televised on BT Sport. So... Obviously, any time your your kit showcased at the national stadium, that's that's pretty that's pretty good. That's a big big win and a big success. But I think behind the scenes there was even more success internally, really, because um, as we'll touch on in a bit, we manufacture and retail our own ranges. So um, when you're producing a kit for an event of that size, there was lots of hoops to jump through in terms of sponsorship regulations, kit designs, um, the size of the sponsors, where they can and can't go. We obviously had a design for Ascot that we'd done previously, but we had to alter it. Um, and we, uh, one thing that really helped Ascot, I think, is because we can turn stuff around quickly, um, we could give them as long as possible to try and secure new sponsorship because obviously everybody was coming to them with um, sponsorship deals that they wanted because they wanted to get their name on the shirt at Wembley. Um, and uh, so we left it quite late to, to get the kits done. And then when we actually produced the kits and they arrived with us, we realized that one of the one of our S's on the on the back of the shirt um, actually might be an area where we couldn't actually uh, advertise our brand. And so we undenied about what we do because it was about three days away from the event. And um, we decided that actually, you know, we didn't want to put the pressure on Ascot that they were worried about their kit and whether or not that they, they might be allowed to wear it. Obviously, I'm sure they would have been, but... Um, so we ended up having to do the kit again, um, and we, we pulled it off in two days. Which, um, given given the time of year as well, it was it was peak cricket season. So um, we were obviously really busy on the cricket side of the business, um, but we pulled out a few late nights to to, to get the kit um, done in time. And and obviously, we had an amazing day at, at Wembley because Ascot won, um, which all of a sudden. When you win the FA Vars final, the coverage you get then is it's it's through the roof. So um, it was a it was an amazing day and a, amazing for the company and and certainly because we're we're trying to educate people that we're we're not serious cricket, we're serious sport and serious cricket is definitely a part of it, but actually we do more than just cricket. Um, so to see our football kits at Wembley and the non-league finals day was yeah pretty special. Amazing! It's a piece of history, right? Winning winning the FA yeah. Vars. So. Your your case is a part of history as well, which is yeah, exactly really it's, cool. There's plenty of um, photos. So we've got plenty of photos. So yeah, it's awesome, amazing. And um, before we go into the e-commerce side of things, I do want to stress that unique part of it, where obviously being able to do that turnaround mm. is one of your service, um, you know, unique service uh, levels as well. Because you know, I've I've dealt with a lot of your competitors that 
source a lot of their products from Southeast Asia because, you know, the South Asian market for textiles is so big. Mm. Um, but having that sort of in-house British manufacturing is what's really helping you guys out in actually being able to personalize the kits uh, on a last minute basis as well, like you did for Ascot United. Yeah, I think um, look, we, we've always, as, as a business, our, our sort of values are always, we're in it to solve the headaches that sports clubs have. Um, when we first introduced personalized team wear, the, the, the problems were that um, clubs, the way that clubs used to order kits was, was a complete mess, to be honest. You would, you would order in bulk and you would, you would tie up so much money in stock that you'd have held in the club um, changing rooms. And it was, you'd be left with loads of surplus stock at the end of the year because actually you didn't use it all. And the quality wasn't great, but the lead times were also really long. So um, we introduced a bit like an online team store model, which meant that we could turn things around in five to seven days. Now, when you talk about the sort of bespoke kits and um, things that are really u- these sort of unique designs now and the sort of move away from template designs that you tend to see a lot in football is a good example where you've got two clubs wearing night kits. They're exactly the same kit. One's just a different color. Um, in order for us to pull off bespoke kits um, and to stick with our values of turnaround times and service, we had to invest a lot of money to bring all the production in-house. So, you know, you can't. We can't be telling clubs that yes, you can have your bespoke kit, but it's going to be six weeks and it comes from overseas, and we're not in control of everything. We have to be in control of everything as a manufacturer and retailer to solve all the headaches that I just talked about. You've got to be in control of everything, so that when I'm telling a club that actually we're going to have your kit delivered by this date, we know we're going to have that kit delivered by this date because you know we are physically in control of every process that goes. So, so yeah, it, it's it's um, it's something that we worked really hard to bring in um, because we knew that that was the shift in the sort of market and, and people were moving towards those dial kits, but it wasn't something that we could bring in if we couldn't make it work within sort of our values of how we, we deliver kits to clubs. Now, amazing. And I think that's a massive testament to what you guys do. And I think it has massive perks. I know that, you know, I speak to a lot of business and I speak about profitability and sometimes on a, on a longer term basis, you know, a lot of products are sourced from uh, from other markets because it tends to be cheaper. However, for the personalization side of things, for, to keep your customer happy, it was a massive part of your business, right? So to be able to do that, having that in the UK has a massive advantage for you guys. And it, 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 it has shown in terms of what you are able to produce and how quickly you can produce it as well. Yeah, I mean, we sign a lot of clubs based on what you just said. They've been let down by their current supplier. Um, yeah. They were promised something, uh, the, the kit didn't arrive, you know, the kit was poor quality, all, all the promises that they were given, they were let down. And, that, and that's really where we, we sort of come in and, you know, um, we can we can solve those headaches quite quickly for clubs. So, yeah, it's uh, it's really good. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a process that I've been I've been part of. I've gone through it. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll be speaking soon on our, on our business end as well. I'm yeah, sure, Tom. So, yeah. um, but um, yeah, now that we move towards that online store side of things, and you know, this is the online hustle podcast, and I do have to ask, how has that affected your business? Because obviously, it's gone from, as we we've already mentioned, it's gone from a you know an independent cricket retailer to a multi support you know kit and and product provider. How has that online store really affected the business? Yeah, so, so uh, you know, online, you know, when when we sort of launched the e-commerce, you're you're essentially taking what is, it's it's a localized offer, and you're taking it nationwide overnight. Obviously, it takes time to build that up, but well, all of a sudden, you've got a platform where you can service clubs in Scotland, and you can service you know, clubs in in Newcastle, and and obviously still locally as well. But um, you know. When we moved to e-commerce, you know, and we launched what is known as an online team store model, that was a significant step in the sort of the growth trajectory of the business because really we were probably one of the first teamware providers to launch an online team store model. It was very new at the time and, and it came out of all of those issues that we talked about earlier where clubs were buying kit in bulk, but they were left with so much surplus stock, it just didn't work and they were waiting long times for, for the kit to arrive. And by leveraging this sort of e-commerce and having this sort of online team store model, it meant that, you know, um, players, coaches, parents, they could come onto this online shop that we hosted, 
place their individual orders and we would then deliver it to their doorstep in five to seven days, um, which at the time it was sort of unheard of. And I remember the very initial stages, we obviously, we worked locally um, with, with clubs that we had good relationships with and, and sort of almost tested the model to see if it worked. And, um, you know, we would, I remember we, in our um, our small shop in Thatcher, we actually extended it and we had an embroidery machine in, in the next room where somebody was churning through all of the cricket shirts, making them and, and then packaging them up and going down the road to Royal Mail and sending them out. Um, it just, it just, it's become a platform that's just grown and grown and grown. I mean, we started when we launched a team store model, I think we started with about 15 team stores. Um, we now have over a thousand team stores that use our platform. Um, and that, that couldn't happen without e-commerce. That's just, and, and what we've always been really proud about is um, a lot of people now can offer a team store. It's quite common in our industry, but yeah. Where we go above and beyond is all of our platforms that we've built since the very start has been bespoke platforms because we, everything we do, we focus around this sort of club model um, because um, we want to give clubs as much flexibility as they can with their with their um, their team kit. You know, we want them to be able to change their ranges if they want to. We want them to be able to change sponsors easily. You know, we don't want them to have to send us requests and then wait two weeks whilst our team prepare it all and then re-upload it onto their store it's got to be an instant process um so we've gone through sort of two rounds of sort of redeveloping and re-engineering the team store platform um and you know it just continues to grow and grow and you know we had to we, we're actually in the process of launching a new website which by the time i think this comes out it will have launched which has been two years in the making and i always get asked why is it two years why is it taking so long and it's because everything is so bespoke we manufacture and retail everything in house, so everything that the customer sees is actually also powers the back end of our system. How our team manufacture those garments, everything has to be automated. And yeah, the the, the sort of the evolution of a team store models. You know, we're we're now introducing things like um, commission schemes and loyalty and and markups, so that clubs can actually raise funds as well through the team store platform. It's not just a place where you can come and purchase kit, but actually you can raise funds. But that's really important you know our market research that we went out to our clubs suggested that clubs need to be uh one of the biggest problems they've got is raising funds um yeah. uh and and we can now power that through our platform so it's evolved massively um you know e-commerce i think at the moment in our accounts are about 70 percent of our our total revenue but the, the launch of the new platform uh it means we want to be pushing almost 90 95 percent of everything through our, our platform um so it's been a it's been amazing, it's been amazing, really really good, and I'm excited to see as soon as it as in as soon as it launches how how it it has changed. Um, you know I've I've looked so many cricket products through your website. And I want to see how the personalization side of things really has changed in the in the new platform. What I wanted to understand, obviously, because what you already mentioned, you are in a very competitive market. Because as I said, I I have personal experience, and I keep smiling on camera simply because you have touched so many of pain points that I've experienced with other suppliers, right? So what what would you think, you know, in, in the competitive world that you're in, how are you differentiating yourself, not in terms of service, but in terms of how you market yourself? Yeah, I think I think it, it sort of ties in really with service in, in the fact that, you know, we very much market ourselves on being, um, you know, we're small enough to care, but we're big enough to deliver is what we sometimes say, because actually it's that personal touch that often, um, you know, we have a, a, an amazing retention rate of clubs that we work with because every club will be assigned an account manager. They'll, they'll work personally with them. Um, we're always on the end of the phone, you know, our, our FIFA ratings, are, you know, 4.6 out of five, I think. Um, and it's just that, that level of service, we will go above and beyond for our clubs um that's what we've always been in it for you know yes we want to solve the headaches um but we also want to add more value wherever we can add more value to clubs um because look there's always another headache around the corner when it comes to sport sport kit and sports in general um we want to be able to really sort of um solve all of those issues so when we when we market our offering to people you know we know we're not we're not a, a nike a, a new balance uh an adidas we can't compete with those brand names. We know that. But what we do offer is that personal service. And actually, the personal service you get when you're working 
directly with a manufacturer and a retailer. You know, you're not working through a third party um, because, you know, with the greatest respect, Nike, Adidas and New Balance aren't really worried about um, a grassroots cricket club or a grassroots football club. Um, they're worried about their bigger contracts. But but for us, we, we care about all of them. And I think that's that's really sort of key to our messaging and our marketing that we get out there is that actually, you know, yes, we will turn kits around quicker than anybody else. Yes, we can reduce all the headaches that you've got and the pain points. Yes, we've got an amazing online platform that just takes every headache away if possible. But actually, it's, it, is, it is that service and that, that personal touch that we have that I think really sets us apart. Amazing. Yeah, I completely agree with what everything you said because I've seen it on, on, first on, on hand as well. Now, we move into, as, as we said, we're talking about the diversification side of things. And I personally am a massive ad- advocate of Amazon Prime and, you know, always buy the product that is ready, uh, readily available. I'm very much the type of person that rides the impulse buy. When it comes to cricket, it's the only time I'm different because I am very, not picky, because I have so much stuff. I don't necessarily need cricket products, but I will always look for the next next one, right? Yeah. Hence why I think the personal and physical shop that you have at, at Dubai, at the cricket arena, is very, very important. And a lot of cricket players that I know feel exactly the same because you almost have to have a feel of the products to be able to to kind of use it. And, you know, I've, I have plenty of examples where, you know, there's, there's people that still buy products online and, and they are, and, and it's a fantastic revenue. And you said 95% of your revenue, you want that your new platform to be part of it. However, I know so many people that will happily make the trip to Dama to your shop, to be able to feel the product to see what it's like and purchase it in in the shop itself. And I've done it multiple times. You know, the last time I wanted to buy new cricket spikes, new cricket shoes, I came all the way to Darwin, which is a 40 minute drive for me. For anything else, I would be online buying buying the products online and, and waiting for it to come back. I could even return it, right? But I felt the need to come to Series Sport and, and come to the shop and buy the product simply because I have the opportunity. It's close by and I can go and have a look. And it's a testament to this whole episode, right? It's pushing you guys to make that personalization and at the same time push an extra sale simply because you have the positioning plates already. Yeah, I think all you touched on there is, is correct. I think cricket is a very specialist sport. Yeah. Um, it still baffles me today that people are willing to part way with 600, 700 pounds, which is the cost of a top end cricket bat now yeah. online without actually having that physical right, yeah. touch that it's it's so expensive so there will always be a place for as far as we're concerned for cricket retail because um because of that reason and i always compare it a little bit to golf because golf is very similar as well you know yes people will go and buy um some people will and, and some people still buy 600 pound cricket bats online yeah you know with time and it always blows my mind but um there will be people that buy golf clubs online, but actually a lot of them will go into a shop and they'll they'll actually get the opportunity to hit it. They'll they'll feel it, and um, you know, I think what really is is nice about the sort of in store experience is that level of again I talk about it a lot, but that level of service and the personal advice that we can yeah, give. Yeah. You know, we're all experts in our field. Um, certainly, the guys in the shop are, and you know, cricket is a very individual sport as well. In that it's a team game, but actually the kit purchasing side is very individual what a, a cricket bat that might suit me wouldn't suit you uh, because our games are very different. Um, footwear, you know, the shoes that fit me might not be the right shoes that fit you because actually you have a di- different discipline in the sport. So you do need that that level of service. So the online sort of, um, sorry, the offline sort of retail will, will always be there and it, w- it will still always contribute uh, considerably to our, um, to our offering. Um, we're very fortunate that when we move to the Dummer Cricket Centre, we get a, a lot of footfall come into the building because of obviously the net lanes and the coaching. Um, they all have to walk past the shop as they go through. Yeah. So the shop's really well positioned, and, and we we see we see thousands of customers come in through the doors. Um, it's still something that people will do. And, and whilst there is a lot of sadly, there's a lot of um, you know 
retail um, falling by the wayside. I think it, I don't think it will, will go in cricket. Um, I think it's just, it, it's very difficult to do it just on its own. You need yeah. to have a revenue streams as we talked about, but actually for us, you know, since, um, since COVID, uh, I think our in-store revenues increased 15%, um, which yeah. is fantastic. Because we are, amazing. we are restricted because of our geographical location. So, um, you, you've got to try and pull people in, um, and just, raise a bit of awareness so yeah it's it's one of those things that i don't think it will it will go for us because it's it's still so important because of the way people want to purchase that's amazing and, and i completely agree and I, I wanted to use my own example but to kind of push that point because it, it is true it's um and we're going to go through a few things about it i personally and a little bit of an addict anyway i have about 25 cricket bats so i've never needed another one not too many every time <laughs> but every time, every time I come to Dama, I do have, I always have that insight. I will try something. And if it's the right thing and it's the right price, I always end up purchasing something for absolutely no reason. But again, it's, it's, a, it's good for business because you have given us that opportunity, right? And I want to do yeah. my job well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Which is really, really good. Um, and we're going to touch that, touch that in a second. But firstly, I wanted to ask, um, I think for our, for our listeners, it's really important to understand what are the challenges of, being able to manage the e-commerce side of things, the personalization side of things, but also your the 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 retail store. I think it's that's a really good question. I think the the things that we've had to the biggest thing I think for us there's two things I would say from I'll take retail and e-commerce as, as two examples. So looking specifically at obviously the retail is cricket, so I'll, I'll stick with cricket. But you know the first thing is it's actually it's actually stock. It's a bit boring, but um, we it's have true. Um, understandable yeah but we have so we have um all of our stock that is available online is also available in store um before the launch of our new website which um obviously is a couple of weeks away um we have to manage that manually still which is is a real pain um because you could realistically have somebody buying a cricket bat online that we're actually almost selling instantly in store at the same time so you always get that those odd occasions where actually you've sold something in store that actually somebody's bought online which is it's, it's not it's not great it's not a great service and, and we've, we've we've worked hard to touch on that so when i talked earlier about sort of 95 percent of revenue going online a lot of that is um actually pushing sort of in-store sales into our online platform because that way we can manage the stock as one whole system um which is going to be really good but probably the biggest area i would say is actually um how do you deliver that on that in-store experience that we talk about, which is so great. How do you deliver that online? How can you deliver that on a website? Um, it's so it's it's so hard. It's really difficult. And um, you know we and and that's not just cricket equipment. Actually, that's that's actually covers off you know the sort of teamwear side of the business because you know when we're sat in a room with somebody talking talking them through our ranges, showing them the ranges, they can feel it. They can they can look at the production facility. They can see how it's all done. How do you offer that that really great service to then somebody who's actually jumping on a Zoom call from Scotland? It's it's really difficult. And I think one thing that we've really sort of tried to focus on to try and enhance that sort of, I guess, is the on, omni-channel experience is we have sort of invested a lot in our sort of content marketing strategy. Um, so we uh, there's, a, there's a great book by a guy called um, Marcus Sheridan called They Ask You Answer. And um, it's it's amazing. And his philosophy is all about um, you need to be answering all of the questions that customers will have um, in an online format as well, because you know um, that's where a lot of people are now looking. So um, we made a conscious decision to sort of um, work on our content strategy, um, sort of just after COVID, really, um, and start um, on the cricket equipment side. For example, we started doing a lot of product reviews. Um, lot of reviews and detailed reviews as well where we take the bats into the net lanes we'd hit them we'd sort of explain why this bat might be suited to one person over another and just trying to bring as much of that in-store experience as we could online um i mean our youtube channel since 2021 i think we had about three thousand subscribers it's now sort of sixteen thousand. so um that has been an amazing channel for us to sort of um not only deliver that experience, but also raise the profile of, of, of serious cricket. Um, and TikTok was another channel that we, we wanted to pu- publish that sort of content on. Um, and I mean, TikTok is just a 
phenomenal channel for quick growth because we went from zero to 20,000 in, in one and a half years. And I think last year alone, we had about 3 million views on our content. I mean, that's, that's a lot of eyeballs on the serious cricket brand. But it was very much a case of, right, we need to find a way to deliver as much of that in-store experience and take it online as we can. And, and we found that video was a really good way of doing that because we could get our equipment manager behind the camera and sort of explain what he would explain to somebody in store. Look, it's never going to be the same. It, it, it's impossible, I think, personally, um, to, to completely replicate that in-store experience. But we made some good steps to, to, to do um, as much as we can Um with the resources we got available, but also, I think the new website we're introducing live chat, which I think will be a really good uh, touch point for customers. Um, if we look at the teamwork side of things, and uh, again, it's probably the same for a six hundred pound cricket bat. It's they're not impulse buys. It's not something that you just buy on a whim, right, like you yeah. said about Amazon Prime. That's not something that you can just buy off the cuff. No so um, there's a lot of research that goes into um, buying a cricket bat or or choosing a new kit supplier and um we just want to add in another touch point where you know on the page where somebody's looking at our team we're offering okay well we've got a, an advisor ready to speak to you if, if you've got any questions because um we know firsthand working with obviously a lot of clubs now it's it takes time uh so that that for me is probably one of the hardest challenges and uh, i think that there's a lot now um with personalization uh, that, that is helping online, you know, as part of the new website, we were also going to put on some sort of customer profiling. So, um, for example, you'd come on and, and you're, you're going to fill out a bit of a questionnaire as to what sort of player you are as a cricket player and, and what kit you're after. And our system will work through that and then sort of provide you with recommendations. So there's, there's, there is things that you can do. Um, and that is, and that is an ongoing challenge, but I think it's one that we've, we've made some good strides in. Yeah. Completely, completely understood, and it is again amazing testament to you guys and what what you've been able to achieve overall. It's there's this one particular thing that I really wanted to mention, and something that I even the last, the first time I formally properly met you was around March, I believe March time. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you know the this whole event that we were talking about, I made a whole LinkedIn post about it because it is something that is becoming a you know increasingly more normal, and I think. It's almost normalized in the fashion industry because a lot of businesses, you know, through businesses like Klarna as well, you can really try products and see if you like them and then kind of return if you're not if you're not a fan. However, what I really like about the try before you buy event that Series Pool run and Dama is the sort of effect and bringing people together and kind of making you try products was really, really important. Yet again, I felt your marketing genius, <laughs> and as I already said, I have. I'm going to put a photo up screen. Rob's going to help me. I have a photo of 25 bats that I have, and this one particular bat that I ended up buying just because I went to the event. And I'm going to describe what happened simply because the way the whole event uh, works is, you know, there's loads of people that turn up to to you to your venue, and you have different manufacturers, cricket bat manufacturing cricket equipment manufacturers there and you know people can just go in and pick up a bat and try them in your cricket lanes right and i i picked up this particular bat which i only liked because of the stickers uh because the stickers are cool but then i was in the lane uh and someone was feeding me the the cricket balls via by the, by the bowling machines and it felt really good i really liked the bat i didn't need it but I ended up purchasing it anyway, and it worked perfectly well, uh, perfectly well, and it and it is a huge testament at how that really works. I still have the bat; I haven't used it much, but it is an amazing bat. And I still enjoyed it. I'm going to put a video up as well of me using the bat in the lane at at, at Dama. Uh, obviously, I'm going to put a, a, a me playing using a, a me, you know me looking good looking using good, it as well. Yeah. No, not not me missing the ball at any point, but. Why don't we go through that idea, that initiative, how it came up and what you're planning on kind of achieving with it? I think, um, look, we're in, a, we're in a very fortunate position that we have a retail outlet that also is attached to a cricket centre. Uh, you've got, as we talked about, we've got free net lanes, we've got coaches, we've got indoor cricket. And, you know, it was 
it was again it was all about service how can we take the service that we offer in store and take it a step further and the concept of try before you buy came up and and i think it it, it does come a little bit from i mentioned it earlier but but golf you can do it so golf you'll go into um you know i think you know, someone like american golf i know they do it um you pick up some test test um uh, clubs and they, they scuff the face and then you can go and hit some balls it was like why can't we do that in cricket because we're very fortunate we have it all on site you know we don't have to go and find a venue for it we've got it here so um originally we, we we reached out to a couple of the bigger brands that we work with and we had a really good relationship with and just sort of said look can you supply us with a load of kit for customers to try um and really it's within their interest because they want to get their product in front of as many people as possible so you know, and, and it was, you know, it was, a, again, it was a way of us to add more value. So we got a couple of brands on board early on and, and sort of started running the event. Um, and it's just grown year on year. I mean, again, we are limited by location, but, you know, we, we have, uh, there's somebody that comes from Wales and they come every year. Um, and it's a long way, but, but like they said to us when they come, that nobody can really offer anything like this, certainly in cricket it's not really something that many people do in cricket. And we're very fortunate now that the brands that we work with uh, really see the benefit of it. And, you know, we, we can, you know, we can now obviously run the reports at the end of the day to say, look, this is now what, you know, we, um, this is what we've sold of your kit this year um, because of the impact of try before you buy on that day. And, uh, you, you know, and then when you sort of take that, you can pitch it to other brands and say, look, look at the impact that this event's had for this brand. It could be the same for you. We're very fortunate now that we there's not many brands that don't get involved, and actually we have brands coming to us saying, "Look, we'd love to be involved because yeah. like, nobody's really doing it." I think you know, I think in twenty the, the event that's just gone, you know, um, that one day um, it counted for fifty percent of the sales for the month. Um, just that one event in those sort of four hours that that you guys were here, and um, it's an amazing event. It's something that we continue to grow year on year. Um, we like to add more value year on year. Um, you know, originally it was just come in and try try some kit. And originally it was just try some bats. It's now you can try the pads, you can try the gloves, you can try the helmets, um, you can try the footwear. You know, we then started offering free coaching as part of it as well. So we've got a we've obviously got a fantastic coaching department that can then offer add further value because actually not only are you getting a hit of the kit, but our coaching team will give you some free tips and pointers. Um, We've got over, I think it's over two thousand pounds worth of prizes we now give away on the event, and and everybody that comes gets a discount, which is obviously a winner for everybody. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's an amazing concept, and it's one that obviously we've been running every year, bar obviously the COVID, um, and it continues to grow, and hopefully uh, next year will be even bigger, and, and we'll see you again. Yeah, yeah, I will be there. Unfortunately <laughs> for for my bank account, I will be there. Yeah, uh, I will be for the foreseeable future because yeah, yeah, it's a huge testament. I do say. The event was done really, really, really well, and I think it, it it kind of really inspired me for, you know, the business that I consult to. You know, why why can't we get your business to to that level where we can have a retail position, where we can do these these type of things? And it's I, I as you say, it's very product dependent because mm -hmm. cricket products need that sort of feedback and need that possibility for you to try. But I'm sure there are other products that that translate uh, very much the same. If there's one piece of advice that you could give or other businesses of running that type of thing, uh, starting that type of thing, what would it, what, what would it be? Mm, that's, that's a good one. I think, I think probably I would say don't scale too quickly at, at the detriment of the customer experience. Um, originally when we started, uh, I don't think we even had like a register. It was just a case of let's just see if this is, this works. And we started getting more and more people turning up. And obviously we are, we are restricted with the space that we've got. And, you know, uh, we get hundreds of people now come to this event. And what we didn't want is you, you don't want um, people coming and then having a really poor experience because they're waiting for a long time to try the kit or the queue in the shop is too long. So we had to sort of introduce registers and, and sort of uh, just so that we've got a bit of foresight as to how many people are going to turn up and how we can manage that internally. We've had to move things around over the years, um, you know, the expedition space now sort of is going to move into the arena because it's a bigger space and there's a better, better corridor for the flow of traffic and all little things like that. And I think you can almost be get a bit carried away with something that's going so well and really ramp it up. But actually, 
if the experience that the customer's getting is 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 being harmed, then it, it doesn't really make sense to do that. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably what I would say. And I would I would also you know the one thing that really worked for us is because we didn't scale too quickly, and you know we put some measures in place. We also could prove the concept. So obviously we wanted to get as many brands involved, but at the start it was very difficult because nobody really knew what we were trying to pitch and it was so new to the cricket industry. So we were able to sort of prove that concept first. And then, as I mentioned, we could then give brands detailed feedback and say, look, this is what this event's brought in for you and for us. Um, and then we could go and pitch that to other brands and that just helped us scale it up. Um, but, but we scaled it up at the right level. We didn't just get too carried away because you can do and, and why wouldn't you but I think if it's going to harm the customer experience then um, it's probably something that you wouldn't want to want to do perfect I completely agree it, it's yeah uh, I appreciate the advice so I think it's really really important I think I want to go into the final question before we go into our final section yeah. and you know all these changes all this diversification that you've made this new platform obviously mm-hmm. makes me want to ask about what is the future vision of the future plan, where does Sirius Paul want to go and what is it that you guys want to achieve over the next few months and over the next few years as well? Yeah, so um, a big part of, of what we've talked about is the launch of this new website. So we're launching a new e-commerce platform that really takes what is known as to a lot of people as a cricket business that does a bit of team wear and, and does a bit of other sport team wear. And we're turning that into what is a multi-sports team wear brand. Um, and the cricket uh, the cricket side of, of things will still stay the same. We'll still be offering that level of service, but the new platform, when you land on it, you do know us as serious sport and you can see straight away that actually we are more than just cricket. Uh, Cause that's always been a challenge for us. Um, we, we're, we're well known in, in the cricket industry, but yeah. not so well known in those other sports. So, um, and actually it's quite nice. That there's a lot of people that play cricket that also play other sports. Um, yeah. And there's that nice crossover that, and we always got that comment from people saying, oh, we didn't know you did football. We didn't know you did hockey. And now, the, you know, the new platform um, really will will change things for us in, from a branding perspective, but also all of that functionality that I talked about earlier, you know, the, the next step for our online team store platform, um, that's all being launched, you know, powering and automating a lot of our internal processes for the manufacturing team. That's going to save hours of time. So that's a really sort of good platform for us to then really launch the, the company to the sportswear market. You know, um, we, we do lots in cricket, but we want to do a lot more in football, hockey, rugby, and netball. And we want to go to schools and universities and colleges. And we do we do a few already, um, but the, the platform will be key to that, that, that growth. Um, but then on the sort of cricket side of things, um, we are exploring a pop-up shop, so a pop-up retail store, um, which, you know, we, we've identified some locations where we think actually, um, like we talked about earlier, there is still a place for cricket retail. And I think there's some places um, and locations that actually don't have easy access to that, that we want to try and explore. So that's in the pipelines for the next year, um, which is really exciting. Um, the first time we sort of done anything like that. Um, and also the cricket centre, so um, we, we, we've got really sort of big ambitious plans to, to completely revamp the cricket centre, um, completely refurbish it, but not only refurbish it but ex- extend it. So at the moment we have three cricket lanes and a and a playing arena. We all re- we want to double that and have another three net lanes and another playing arena. Um, but the MD has got real visions to turn it into almost you know the go to cricket centre. Um, in the country, you know, uh, most people would talk about facilities like Lords, um, where obviously it's first class cricket and yeah. they're very fortunate with the facilities that they've got there. That's not open to the general public, really. Um, I think you can hire it, but I don't think it's too accessible. Um, yeah. We want to bring that sort of level of technology in house here and make yeah. it accessible to the general public. Um, so yeah, that that's really quite quite exciting uh, for the business that we've got all these different things uh, going on as well alongside the, the platform launch. Yeah, amazing! I really really appreciate your time, Tom. This, um, as people that that may know me and then the host of the Online House podcast, uh, uh, you know, I'm a massive cricket nerd. So, um, it's a, all of a sudden this tends to be the, the my, one of my favorite episodes. But you know, I, I have to be a little bit unbiased and kind of ask you the same question that I ask all my guests. And I know you know what's coming, but 
this section we call Believe It or Not. Uh, believe it or not, the year 2013 was now 10 years ago, Tom. Uh, I might just kind of show our age, but um, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, it's 10 years ago now, the year 2013. If there's one piece of advice you would give yourself from the year 2013, what would that be? And no, it cannot be investing in crypto because that's a cheat code. Um, you're right. I did cheat. So I didn't know this question was coming, but I still found it very difficult to answer. Um, and I actually, I'm actually going to say something that um, might be a bit left field, but I would actually, I'd actually tell myself 10 years ago to, to go and explore the world. Um, I think I've gone through you know, I, I don't, I've never taken a break. You know, I've never taken time for myself. Um, I, I'm a bit of a sucker for, you know, I can't switch off very well. Um, I'm always thinking of work. Uh, that's just who I am. But, you know, I came out of, uni I, I, we obviously went through GCSE, and A-levels, university, came out and thought maybe I might have a year off, ended up going straight into work. And I know so many people that have gone and taken whether it's six months or three months and gone and just done a bit of traveling and explored the world and explored different cultures and every time i see that i always think i wish i wish i'd done that and look yeah. i probably still can do that one day but yeah. I've, just, I've just got a young family now so it's a lot it's a lot more difficult to do that obviously with work it's difficult to do that so um i think if i wound back the clock 10 years i'd say go and explore the world um things will be waiting for you when you come back but just go and go and explore and and yeah, get get stuck in with all those different cultures and, and see 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 the world a bit more. Amazing. And you know what? You're not the first guest to actually say the same thing about the traveling. And I'm a huge testament about it because seeing the world makes you learn so many things and kind yeah. of gives you so much perspective. So I really, really appreciate your your time, Tom. And yeah, final thing, if you wanna just kind of plug in and share your contacts, you know, if people want to contact you and contact Serious Paul, how how can they do so? Yeah, so um, you can just head to the website, www.seriessport.co.uk. Um, if, if you're, you're looking for sports team wear, we, we, can, we can certainly help you. Or if you're a, a big cricket fan like yourself, uh, Piero, you can, you can obviously um, look at all our offerings on our website or um, people can reach out to me if they want. Uh, my email is tom at seriessport.co.uk. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, yeah, I really appreciate your time. And yeah, go follow Serious Paul if you can. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Online Hustle Podcast. We hope you found the conversation insightful and inspiring. If you'd like to connect with our guests or learn more about their work, you can find their contact details in the episode description below. Stay in the loop with us, following us uh, at the Online Hustle Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. And remember, if you're looking for an expert guidance on e-commerce or have questions for our strategy and growth team, you can reach out to us via our website at strategy.avarsgroup.com or drop us a simple email at strategy at Stay tuned for more exciting episodes where we continue to unravel the strategies that drive online success.